today on your world. No, I think it's 8 to 5. For me, it doesn't sit right with me yeah. just to have um, presumably around three to four hours of doing nothing okay. just for me to sit there and wait for time to pass by mm -hmm. so that I could impress my boss. Mm -hmm. So I started uh, my company when I was uh, 18 years old. Okay, how old are you now? 26. Wow. And so on tomorrow, when well, we're doing our back-to-back -back claim uh, deliverables, tomorrow, I, yeah, I, yeah. Won't, I won't be here tomorrow. I've decided that I'm going to just take a mental health day for tomorrow. Okay, well, I mean, it's kind of been stressful for the entire team and all the departments that we're working with, and so we're going to need you to be here tomorrow. Well, then maybe so the team I, should take a mental health day as well. I don't know. So a mental That's, health day doesn't necessarily mean, like, a not work day. And keep in mind, you know, at the top of every meeting, I say, hey, How's everybody doing? You can't take a day tomorrow. So maybe we'll have cushion in between each meeting. Can you say so that you again? Can... So yes, sir, I can't take a mental health day to get my mental right from the long, stressful week I had this week tomorrow. Kind of, are you recording this? Are you trying to get, gonna get me, get me canceled? Are you going to post this to your hundred thousand dollars? Absolutely. Okay. Well, th this is unnecessary, but I will kind of reframe what I was saying, Dee. Well, hi there and welcome to a newly relaunched Your World. And my name is Winnie Lubembe. Today on the show, we'll be focusing on a conversation that we began yesterday. And this is as far as a very unique set of generation, and that is the Gen Zs. Now, listen to this. The current workforce is constantly evolving with each generation bringing their own set of values, expectations, and their priorities. And for the Gen Zs, a lot of them are saying, Eight to five is such a waste of time. But is this really the case? That is what we'll be focusing on today's conversation. And before that, you'll see. For eight to five somewhere, I think a salary, let's say 20K. But I think it's a good salary is constant, but it's a shift. At times it's high, at times it's chin. So when you have a balance, you have by the time mwezi naisha, ukikompare na ile 20k unakuta ah kuna vile wewe uko juu kiasi. I prefer kufanya kazi ni kwa kokeja. Nitumie computer tu hivyo. All right, well, let's address a different conversation but still on a generation and this is a conversation that we started yesterday as far as the Gen Zs are concerned. And today our focus will be on the workforce or career if you like and there was a study uh, that was done just recently by CSA police and majority of the Gen Z's that they talked to they said age to five is a total waste of time so today on set I have two Gen Z's with varied opinions as far as I'll say the labor force or work or career is concerned and really what age to five um, means to them so without further ado I have these two beautiful ladies, very outspoken, if you must. So I'm just warning you, eh? I'm just warning you. They're Gen Zs. <laughs> um, at the end of the day, we have Michelle Namasaka, who appreciates the 8 to 5. Cindy, yeah. Gen Z, uh, podcaster. Uh -huh. Let me all. Uh, I'm yes. also a social media producer. Listen. FYI. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> I can't <laughs> Good time, Michelle. Thank you so much for your time. And we also have John Jaroge, who is a Gen Z. Yes, appreciates H25 ish, mm -hmm. but should rather also <laughs> have other things to do. Good to have you as well. Pleasure. Thank you so much for your time. You both look lovely. Thank I you. mean, hey. Bring a mirror. I mean, stop, but don't stop. <laughs> Listen, let's talk eight to five. Yeah. First of all, let's just start from there. What, what, do you, what do you make of that? I don't think it's the worst thing ever. Okay, okay. Well, my I want, but mine is in literally from eight to five. Yeah. I yeah. still yeah. do eight hours. Okay. But it's, I, I, I'm done with my shift at mid, mid, no, okay, maybe afternoon. All right. At two, you okay. know, and I have the rest of the day to myself. Yeah. I don't think it's the worst thing, yeah. honestly, okay. because I've seen my parents, honestly, and other people win in corporate, okay. you know? We have CEOs out here winning in corporate as well, you know, doing mad and big things yeah. and building their big houses and driving big houses. 
how I mean, acquiring big, big cars, cars, acquiring wealth, acquiring wealth, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, generational wealth out of, yeah, okay. So, I don't think it's the worst thing that now we should trash it, okay? No. All right, it's not the worst thing, no. <laughs> George. Age to five, total waste of time. So, I'll give it in this perspective. Okay. Number one, I'll speak of what my experience is. Um, there are other experiences that I admire that are not my realities, and that gives me the gives me the chance to be like eight to five is not the worst idea, but eight to five it cannot be the only way to go about your career life. I mean, eight to five, but not eight to five. Yes, that's why it's eight <laughs> to five ish. I love that. <laughs> Because there's, it doesn't make sense and it doesn't sit right with me yeah. just to have um, presumably around three to four hours of doing nothing okay. just for me to sit there and wait for time to pass by mm -hmm. so that I could impress my boss. Mm -hmm. You get? Mm -hmm. Because uh, what you're actually wasting here is time, which will never come back to you. I mean, what if I tell you I can engage for like three to four hours, dedicatedly do this Thing or the subject matter of what you expect me to do and then once I'm done I can go and do my thing out there I can do my passions I can do things that I am really curious about I mean I'm full of energy in this age period that I am in right now let's utilize it. yes let's utilize it because that time is coming when that extra 30 minutes i'll be spending it with my family i'll be going to pick up kids i'll be going to you know these errands here and there but now I, i'm full of energy and i'm just going to sit and just wait and look at the cars count the cars that are passing kwa parking <laughs> just for you to feel that oh she's been she's, here working yeah it doesn't, make, it doesn't sense. make sense so for me essentially and i am very grateful for my work my type of work yeah where I am not required to be in an office seated on a desk, mm. on, on a seat like in front of a desk and yeah. my laptop yeah. and wait for time to pass by. Okay. I go to the field, um, I train customers mm. and if we've agreed with a customer that you're supposed to have training at 10 and mm. you're going to do it for the next three hours, guess what? My work starts and ends there for that day. Okay. Have on my tried? other time, yeah. uh -huh. I am able to uh, do other things yeah. and while at it just to mention that i'm also an entrepreneur okay. so just to show you that as a gen z we're yeah. not saying that we do not want eight to five for us to go and sleep yeah. or to go and game yeah. we want to do other things and that is how my current employment yeah. has allowed for me to be an entrepreneur oh, and right. employee okay. while at it do you know it's interesting you're saying that now like your current workplace knows yeah that you are an entrepreneur you do your things yeah. on the side okay. yeah but for so many people, you hide. You know that you're a hassle. Yeah. Yeah. You hide. No, I think most of your colleagues will not even know it because they might go tell the HR. Uh -huh. the, the HR is like, well, Nakapa, eight to five, like in between you know, those hours, yeah. you're doing your thing yeah. instead of working mm. on, on, you know, and delivering on the things that you're supposed to yeah. deliver. So a lot of people are scared to actually say, hey, yes, I can deliver here, but also I can deliver on this other, on this other side. Yeah. But I'm just curious to understand. Have you ever tried H to five? But maybe you should stop, speak to Michelle and then I'll come back yes, to you to understand. Okay, okay. Have you ever tried that? Mm -hmm. Did it work? Okay, clearly maybe it did not work because now you do. <laughs> but uh -huh. what was the experience like? Yeah. Because even from from the research by CSF, they're saying Gen Zs, yes, they don't like the H to five. The, one of the biggest reasons is their gatekeepers. You know, like the older people, like in in them. Yes, so people in their forties they'll be like we're not old, but yes. So but the, the younger yes, spirit, right? Like the, the, the older ones yeah. um, are always watching to see. First of all, Michelle, what time do you come in? Uh, what time do you go for lunch? What time are you leaving uh, the office? So it's like a lot of gatekeepers who are constantly watching them mm -hmm. that they don't feel free to do their job. So I wonder, I, I wonder what your experience yeah. is like. Yeah. I think I've experienced that in the office. You know, at times where you're working under pressure and especially you're in the newsroom yeah. and someone just comes to, to stand next to you and expects you to work. You know, look like, bruh. Yeah. So done. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not just there, yeah. but many times it looks like people are just watching you to see 
and I put your job what time? Is it eight hours sharp yeah. from that? Yeah. You know. So yeah. I think there's so much else. Um, that you tweeting at, I'd say in yeah. the office. Yeah. And attend the Bambi. Attend the also, you just tell that person, by the way, I really don't like yeah. standing there. Yeah. When you stand there, I don't like, I don't work well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I wonder what the reaction is. It's be like, <laughs> excuse you. <laughs> <laughs> Can you pick your badge and go? <laughs> <laughs> but for, what is it that you did not like, really, as far as HT5, aside from the time factor? which you said, listen, you can divide this. There are times where you're most um, productive and there are times that you're not, right? But aside from that, the time factor itself, what is it about the age to five that you're like, eh? Okay, mainly it's just the time factor. Mm. And because if I'm to mention other things, they just revolve around the time factor. Right. Because um, you'd say time, I'm required to be here at eight, if not, Actually, there are workplaces I've had, because now this is not my reality. You show up at 8.15, 8 you're told, go back home. Kesho. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, Kesho. Enjoy your relationship with your beds. <laughs> go and <laughs> have fun. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> eventually, kuna repercussions, yeah. because maybe you, you attract the first warning letter yes. and things like that. Yeah. Um, there are other places where, okay, you can just come at that 8.15, there's no problem. Yeah. But you just sit, you you have been, you have gotten this opportunity to work at this place mm -hmm. and now there's nothing much you're doing, but mm -hmm. you have to show up. Like, yeah. company eco busy. Yeah. You're not busy, yeah. but you yeah. just have to be there mm. for you to be seen. That, that you're there. Physically, you're there. Okay. What are you doing? You're just on TikTok, enjoying, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Like, time. you're just yeah. passing time yeah. Yeah. to to wow your boss mm. so it still all revolves around time yeah and um i, I don't think there's any other thing other mm. than time because uh fortunately or unfortunately i have not experienced um dedicatedly working eight to five okay but um the setting that i have had ever since um i started working mm. is hybrid kind of okay. um, of working yeah. where there are days I'm in the office, yeah. there are days, the days I'm not in the, office. in the office. Yeah. Okay. And when I'm in the office it's mm. not like cast on stone that I have to be there mm. at at eight AM or yeah. nine AM. So basically for me, I've seen it I've, I've tested it on this other side All right. that I know how good it feels. Yeah. That I cannot imagine how it feels you know, being on this other that. side. I was gonna ask <laughs> give it a chance, would you but clearly Actually, this, that's a conversation I was having yeah. a bit earlier today. Mm. And I was like, um, I feel like I, I want to taste it. Kidogo too. <laughs> just to know how it feels. <laughs> just to know it feel? how it feels. But I have, I have, I have standards. I have, like, <laughs> I have two rules here and there of how I want it to work. I don't want it to work traditionally. Yeah. I want it to work where I'm able to be like, okay, on Tuesdays and Thursdays I am not in the office. Okay. Yeah. If I am dressing officially, yeah. Yeah. I can throw in but my high waist pants and, and, and a crop top. <laughs> like, I, you know, could I do to... to I don't want it as it is right yeah, now, but yeah. just to show that I still um, I, I still love it that I am able to choose uh -huh. on how to do it. I know? see that. Yeah. I really, I, 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 I see that. I hear that. <laughs> but I'm just like, I really wish that was. But no, no, I think it, it depends mm -hmm. because there's some several places, different workplaces where um, Monday, Tuesday, it's, it's official, everybody knows that. Yeah. Um, Wednesday, Thursday is a bit easy. Friday, listen. Nobody. <laughs> Do you? As long as you deliver. Yeah. And, and, and that works. Yeah. But if there are other institutions where it's, it's formal through and through, yeah. let's say up until, up until Friday. But for you, um, I mean, it's not literally eight to five, but it's the hours that, that you're required to be in the office. So while at that, do you, what is that ideal environment and, and maybe i should ask you this when we have the career coach but for now like what is that like for you in terms of your mental health um your productivity um as well do you feel like you're more productive all the hours or there are hours where you're like hey you know do you, you want me to get fired <laughs> you know, I'm about to spill some tea but yes. you know what i'd say not all that not first of all not every day i'm gonna be productive Let's just start that. I think it's normal, right? Yeah. Right? 
right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very. No, really. Yes. And if not the the whole eight hours, I'm gonna be productive. I'm yeah. such a morning person. Mm. So probably at when I clock in early in the morning, I'm gonna be. I'm coming to the office guns blazing. Yes. But when it reaches at like eleven yeah. or twelve, mm. I'm like, guy. Michelle is gone. Yeah, <laughs> gone. Yeah, I'm just doing. I'm just doing other 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 things, yeah. you know. Yeah. But for the mental health, as mm-hmm. as you asked, yeah. I think journaling has helped. You know, just keeping check on my feelings and also just boundaries. Okay. That my shift ends at two. You can never ever catch me. Oh, maybe at times. Maybe, maybe, maybe yeah. like you don't go time. But you can never get me at working and doing other stuff when I'm okay. out of this with me, my, my shift. Yeah. So, so I think the boundaries and also just how you relate with my, 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 I mean, how I relate with my colleagues. Your colleagues, yeah. Also that, yet keeping other things, yeah. you know, keeping my life yeah. private yeah. and just knowing how I, I should talk to them and yeah. what I should talk to them about. I think that helps with my with my mental health and okay. also just having people to talk, talk to, to. Yeah. and especially people who've gone through corporate like yeah. my mom shout out to mom yeah i tell her whether this and this is happening and she's like we know those people yeah. this is how to handle this is them how you go no. about it. okay yeah. so do you feel there's that environment where you can actually literally go to the hr and say hey i am not okay i need my mental because i gen with a mental <laughs> days <Yeah, it's> very- <laughs> By the way, I think we need mental days. We need yeah, mental honestly. days. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But you have your own mental days. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever. I can Whenever decide. Like. I can decide. We're meeting at 10. Okay. 9 a.m. is my mental. It's my mental. Yeah. It's your mental hour. <laughs> my mental hour. Yeah. I really like yeah. that. Okay. Let's take a break. When we come back, we'll have a career coach here to just then help us understand. So you want flexi hours, right? There's also the gig economy aspect where Gen Z's will be like, I do not want corporate, I do not want anything like that. I prefer, you know, um, this other side. But then the sustainability aspect of the same might not work. And there's some others who say, so then how do we make the work environment better for Gen Z's to thrive, but to also be productive as well? So we'll be getting all that information after this very short break. Stay with us. The show is your world. Explore our market-driven program from PhD, Masters, Bachelors, Diplomas to Certificate programs. Join our September intake and dive into a world of vibrant student life, ultra-modern facilities, and a globally renowned faculty committed to your success. ZTech University. Invent your future. People come to me and they say they get discomfort when they have ice cream. Can you imagine that? Avoiding having cold ice cream. Sensodyne gives you long-lasting protections against sensitivity. And people come in and they're like, oh, it works. I can have ice cream and I'm not in any discomfort. I recommend Sensodyne because it works. It's brilliant. Want to know the biggest story of the week? Do not worry. The Weekly Review got you covered. For in-depth analysis of politics, business, governance, as well as social issues, The Weekly Review covers it all. For well-researched, exclusive and investigative content, read The Weekly Review every Sunday in the Sunday Nation.
you get missing you as your skis at you. Dial star 811 star 924 hash. Skiza, na nation. Self-reflection, continuous learning, and always putting yourself out of your comfort zone. These are some of the key elements needed in personal growth. Kutoka maswala ya maadili, uhusiano wa kihisia, hadi maswala ya fedha, mzazi wa kiume ni muhimu sana kwa familia yake. Personal growth is an individual journey that is influenced by one's beliefs and values. Wanaume ukisimama mbele ya wanaume wenzako, unatoa kifua mbele. Uh, unajikaza kiasi, si ndio? Katika dunia inayobadilika kila uchao, ni jukumu lako wewe kama baba mzazi kuilinda familia yako kwa vyovyote vile. Ungana nasi tarehe 3 Agosti mwaka huu hapa Tilisi kwa gumzo la mwaka la Man Cave Season 4. To all car enthusiasts, we got you covered. We are bringing you a fully fledged car clinic. Also join us for amazing sumptuous meals. Not forgetting, grab your tickets at www.kenyabuzz.com. Tupatane Manke. Welcome back to the show and uh, the show is your world and just in case you're tuning in right now today we want to focus on careers and the big question that we're asking today is uh, is eight to five such a waste of time okay we have two jerseys here uh, <laughs> with varied views and opinions about the same but now we are joined by Jen Motisia. thank you so much for your time mm -hmm. listen you know before we went on the break we were discussing about what they feel as far as H25 is concerned mm -hmm. Michelle here uh, is, okay she's saying it's not 8 to 5 but it's the hours mm -hmm. and they say mm -hmm. uh, but but for Joanne's case uh, she's, she has flexi hours which mm -hmm. is good and you're also a Gen Z boss which is fantastic, because now I want to hear you <laughs> as a boss <laughs> to other Gen Zs. Mm -hmm. But Jane, very quickly, to, to understand workplaces and how Gen Zs are sort of like morphing into the same, adapting into the same, mm -hmm. or just working, right? Mm -hmm. What is it like? What is it that you have, you have said so far? For me, I'm very happy that the Gen Zs have come and disrupt, disrupted the workplace. Mm -hmm. Actually, some of the things that are coming with the Gen Z are benefiting all the five generations. It is really? not a thing. Yeah. Who do I want to work home and work with pajamas? Right. Who do I want to work home, wake up, sit, <laughs> do when you feel like this is my optimal hours, yeah. deliver, do other things, to drop your kids, do ABCD, then come, you know, all that. Eh? Yeah. So I feel like if that disruption is what they know because maybe most of them came to work either during COVID or post-COVID, mm -hmm. then already that's how they're used to. Yeah. They're used to... They came at the time when work was being redefined. Mm -hmm. We are moving from work being a place that you go yeah. to deliverables. Mm -hmm. Yes. I need this report, this 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 format, this way at this time. Yeah. You don't have to come to the office. But if I can get this by tomorrow morning, we have done work. Yeah. 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 So they yeah. came in at a time that um, employers were forced to actually define work. Mm. And trust you me, it is not just benefiting the Gen Z. So there's yeah. so much that has come with so the the flexi working hours working from home, remote working, yeah. all those are things that um, are disrupting the workplace and are benefiting all the generations. So the biggest question is then, how do we make workplaces a conducive, a conducive for work the Gen Z? Because when you say when you want to make workplace a conducive workspace, yeah. again it runs across all the generations. Yeah. Who doesn't want a place that the manager respects them, yeah. the workplace is good, mm -hmm. you are free to do to work and people know that you work and also, you know, you have to cheat between work and family, you know, yeah. and they give you the chance to actually balance the two. Yeah. And not just have, um, like it has both the aspect of, we never have to, to say, mm -hmm. when we ask you in interviews, what is your strength? Yeah. I'm a workaholic. Yeah. That is not a strength anymore. That's a red flag. <laughs> <laughs> You're about to come and stress the rest of us, you know? <laughs> yeah. So I feel, again, it's something that is very beautiful. Yeah. It is making us, like those of us who are in HR, mm -hmm. to think about the workplace as a place where people should actually come and thrive. Mm -hmm. If people are not working because they have no options, mm -hmm. because again, the, the um, online, yeah. there are so many options that people can actually do and get um, yeah. get to make uh, ends meet and all that. Mm -hmm. So um, it's disrupting in a good way. Yeah. At the same time, in terms of the mental space, yeah. I work with very many agencies, yeah. and I wouldn't say that's an issue. 
when they flag the mentor, the mentor forever, there are many other things that cause that. Okay. The issue of them being followed is because also they are working in a space that has very many distractions. Mm. You'll find very many managers complaining about she's always on phone. Yeah. She's busy on her laptop, yeah. but she has connected her WhatsApp, her oh. Instagram, her whatnot. Yeah. And if she was to take a time <laughs> audit, if she was to audit how she spent her day from morning yeah. to this particular time, mm -hmm. then you realize the whole day. The whole day she has the, been yeah. on all the social media channels that are yeah. available. Yeah. So if you don't manage your time well, if you don't do your bit, yeah. then my bit as your line manager is it more done. difficult. Yeah. And I can tell you have the potential. Yeah. Because again, I have to map the people in my team yeah. and I can tell Winnie has the potential. Yeah. When I give her and yeah. I keep checking after one out, where are we, where are we, yeah. work is delivered and delivered well. Yeah. So what Winnie wants is either to know how to to detach herself from the addiction All right. of the digital workspace that they are that yeah. we are dealing with. Because honestly, in this day and age, you you on, some, you can't you can't avoid it. It's, it's some would say they work. Michelle, for example, <laughs> social media. You said social media. Social media producer. She has to be on social media. If that is her work, that's her work. Yeah. But you'd be surprised she can also digress and not do now the official work yeah. and move to know about Michelle. Exactly. Yeah, so even house girls, yeah. people are struggling. You have a house girl who has a phone yeah. and the baby is falling somewhere <laughs> down the stairs because she's not, she's not present. She's not present. So digital yeah. concerns, yeah. the digital presence and how we manage that addiction. Mm -hmm. The addiction of how we live with the digital gadgets and yeah. the Wi-Fi. You know now, we are moving to a space where even Wi-Fi is a basic need. So there is a Wi-Fi in your house, there is Wi-Fi everywhere. Mm. Everybody has a smartphone. Yeah. And therefore that is part of why you see now managers complaining. Yeah. The Gen Cs, yeah. the Gen Cs. Yeah. And they are, we are coming to a space where by us who are used to, the former generation yes. was used to uh, segregating time. Yes. I'm going to work for three hours, mm -hmm. then I get to social media, or I go, I don't know, out for networking, yeah. then yeah. I come back or ABCD, yeah. or I only do these things after working hours. Mm -hmm. So that discipline could be what they are lacking. Okay. Otherwise, in my opinion, uh, by the time you have been micromanaged, mm. by the time I'm all over your space, yeah. it's it because there's, there's some smoke. There's something. There's yeah. some that we need to deal with. Okay. Yeah. Joanne, do you find yourself bossing them the way you're being bossed? Do you find, have you had instances where people quit on Friday <laughs> and Monday? How are you navigating that space? I have seen it. I have experienced it at like first hand. Mm. Where a Gen Z will tell me, um, actually, to not have inconvenience, uh, <laughs> another opportunity has shown up, yeah. <laughs> and I want to be there on one day. Yeah. And I mean, you just have to deal with that. So, so what do you do? do? <laughs> you just go back to your contract and say, your contract says you need to give me four months. There are times, <laughs> there are times you have to go back to the contract, okay. and there are times that. Honestly, you can't do much about it because they will really not show up. And at this point, you have to to answer um, the question of what does the business mean? Wait, does so the business they need this partner yeah. or does the business need to view? Okay, okay. So, so when, when they're coming to say, you don't have nothing from me, they're not coming to, to negotiate. To negotiate. Yes, you know, you know, it's like me, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm out. out. So that you don't see me on Monday, <laughs> just, to, just know that I am in fact in another county. <laughs> so okay. uh, you just have to calm down and ask yourself, what is the most important thing here? Okay. The most important thing in the business needs to move. Yeah, the business needs okay. to move. Uh, my customers need to be served. Yeah. So if I am the one who is going to fill in your shoes and now be the social media ma uh, manager, be the ca cashier, be the be yeah. everything in that business for that period yeah. of your time. Yeah, yeah. you really have to be hard. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, what is it that then we can learn from the Gen Zs? And and number two, the whole aspect about the gig culture, the gig economy, mm -hmm. and how to make it sustainable. So those mm -hmm. are like two questions for you, mm -hmm. for the Gen Zs, as we finish the conversation. So I'll just first of all pick dog from what you're saying. Yeah. So that is called uh, quiet quitting. Mm -hmm. That person, the one that is living without a notice, yeah. it's only that he hadn't found something else. They quit a long time ago. They disengaged. Mm -hmm. They have been staying there because maybe they need to pay bills and all that. So yeah. it's quite, it's a whole thing that came where we even have um, that quiet resignation. You know, yeah. someone has quit, but they haven't put on paper. Yeah. Yeah. But you can tell even work you're pushing them to do. Yeah. What they could deliver in two weeks, they're doing a month. Yeah. What they could do in two hours, they're doing two days. Yeah. And you have to push and make noise and all that. So yeah. it's a whole concept. So again, I'll, I'll, um, I'll contradict a bit okay. and say that um, finding purpose, finding purpose again goes across generations. Right. And I know we are coming from a point where people had worked for a very long time for the paycheck. Mm -hmm. 
like as long as it paid you and you paid the bills, you could stay there and become the bitter woman, the That's bitter true. old man, and That's all that. And, and it was okay. <laughs> <laughs> but our uh, people are moving. Mm. But in terms of purpose driven, I like giving a story about one time that the former president of the US, the John F. Kennedy, mm -hmm. went to the NASA offices yeah. and he found this cleaner and he asked him, What do you do? And the cleaner said, I am helping put a man in the moon. This is a cleaner, a janitor. Yeah. But he could relate in 1962. Yeah. But he could relate his work of cleaning with actually the bigger picture yeah. and mission of the organization. Yeah. And I can assure you for free, since time in memory, you'll never go to any business and find that they have written there, yeah. we are here to make profits. Yeah. That is the main purpose. Yeah. But they say we are here to change lives. Mm. We are here to make bring an news. <laughs> we are here to bring ABCD in. Yeah. And therefore, if, if we were to change our mindsets as uh, the previous generation, and not make people look like they're just coming for the paycheck. Yeah. Even the conversations that we have, yeah. so that people are able to connect. Yeah. Even if you do what for that organization, yeah. she could be doing social media, yeah. but how, what is the bigger impact of that? Yes. She could be your, your crew, yeah. but what is the bigger picture? Because you wouldn't be able to do this. That's true. You understand what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. The example of the apple pie. Yeah. If you don't put the apple, yeah. it is not an apple pie. Apple pie. <laughs> you understand? True. Yeah. So we have to understand the purpose of that apple in that yeah. pie and my nurse something is missing. So yeah. if you're able to relate and even have work, uh, purpose-driven workplaces, mm. not just uh, careers and jobs, yeah. but purpose-driven, where people actually value and they know that everybody that comes, it, it's, it's a whole topic that I keep saying yeah. for the Christians. Yeah. So with Jesus, when he was saying which body organ is more important mm. than so, and he was trying to tie the purpose of the different body organs yeah. with the work, the work that they do for yeah. our bodies. Yeah. So I wouldn't say it's something new. Yeah. Maybe they are more aware. Yes, the other generations they are really being are. They really mm -hmm. are. Yeah, I mean the yeah. cases of like mental health. Mm -hmm. um, previous generations, yes, they would feel it. It's not mm -hmm. like they didn't feel it. Mm -hmm. They did, mm -hmm. but they were out, they, they were not outspoken. Mm -hmm. Now, Genesis are like, yeah, mental days. We need, we need mental days. Yeah, I'm taking my mental <laughs> day today. Don't, don't mess, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. as you should. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but also because they're also living in a very stressing environment. Yeah. Um, you can imagine for us who would wake up in the morning. You mind your business because there's nobody apart from your family mm -hmm. and your workmates. Mm -hmm. There was no change of what you're used to. Yeah. But now you wake up, the first thing, maybe some people even before they leave bed, that person goes social media. Yeah. Then you are seeing everybody who is doing better than you. I know. Of course, we. in social media. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> <laughs> and then nobody is talking about their dark side. Yeah. It's how they are doing better than you. Better than, so if yeah. you don't know how to manage that, yeah. then you start coiling and coiling and maybe they're also the gig economy and then you, get, you get to the office better exactly and, the and then yes. maybe, yeah. yeah and, and speak of the gig economy really mm. as we bring this to a close then what advice would you have for mm -hmm. a gentleman who's like i'm no eight to five mm -hmm. does not work for me mm -hmm. but how best can i leverage this gig economy mm -hmm. make it sustainable but also help me to thrive mm -hmm. and, and grow well apparently most people who are into that is because um the thing that we keep saying there are no jobs. Most people would actually prefer a job that is secure because we all want to plan. Mm. We all want to be able to know that in 10 years I'll have owned my house, in five years I'll have done ABCD, whether it's business yeah. or it's uh, the gig and all that or it's a form of employment. Yeah. So people like that certainty. Yeah. But because of the uncertainty and because of how, um, instead of sitting home, mm. there's so much you could do to create your own financial and all that. Eh? Yeah. But then there's a lot of abuse, which maybe as individuals the gig economists can do anything for, for themselves. Yeah. Yeah. But the government, and even when it's listening from the government, yeah. we need to come up with the regulation mm -hmm. on how then do we manage and classify. Because for a very long time we had former employees mm -hmm. and contractors. Yes. or yeah. But now we have people who are like the Uber drivers. Yeah. yeah. So they're going to spend maybe all their life mm -hmm. driving, uh, either mm -hmm. the, or delivering food for Glovo, mm -hmm. or I don't know, doing what. Or, and it's a lot of work. Yeah. So Glovo is having almost zero employees because then all those people are doing their work. Yeah. But who is catering for their pension? Mm -hmm. Who is catering for their medical cover? Mm -hmm. Who is catering for their social protection? Call it social protection. Yeah. Because at some point you are down, you are sick. Yeah. The day you pack your vehicle, your you are not working. Yeah. What that particular day? How do you do that? Particular day? And, and I'm just using Uber. Okay. But it could be that I'm a virtual assistant. It yeah. could be that I do pieces online and I'm paid for that. Yeah. The day I'm sick. Yeah. When a normal employee, they have sick leave. The day I'm sick, what happens to what me? Happens to so we need like, legislation. Mm -hmm. We need to just know that there's a new entrant mm -hmm. into, the, into the labor market yeah. that needs to be governed and yeah. given the social protection that, that other needs. employers have been given. Yeah. But before we get there, if you're in the gig economy, again, you have to take it upon yourself to yeah. start putting money in place that can actually take care of you. Yeah. Pursuing your own financial yeah. independence yeah. as much as you can. So go, invest in your financial literacy, education, know how to invest, how to multiply your money, how to do ABCD, how to move from, because 
ideally it's what you call self-employment. Mm -hmm. And in self-employment, you're very exposed. Yeah. They say being employed is risky, you can be fired. Yeah. Self-employment is riskier yeah. because when you're sick, the two of you what and happens? your business are yes. sick. Okay? <laughs> so, true. and you have to move now to the other quadrant, yeah. which is called the, the business. Yeah. A business has systems. Yeah. So you have three motorbikes here, you have three vehicles, you have a business that you do um, events management for people. Yeah. The paper event, but you have a system that works mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. So we have to also invest in understanding then how do we manage our gigs. Yeah almost like a business, such that I can actually afford to go for holiday. I like that. And the business moves. It still moves, yeah. Because if you don't do that, yeah. then you suffer from burnout. You'll be having, you have to run from here to there. Why? Mm. Because your bills are pushing you. Yeah. 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 You have no other source of money. And now the taxes don't <laughs> even start. Wait. Okay. Yeah. Your bills are pushing you, and therefore, you have to move from this gig to, to the, the next, to, to the, the next, and yeah. it is carrying very heavy reputational risk. Absolutely. Because if I mess you, yeah. then she can't give me a job. That's true. Yeah. That's so true. I would wish that if we manage it in a way that people are also able to just work, uh, work and rest. Yeah. Do eight hours, yeah. rest a few hours, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Even as much as in that, uh, yeah. then you don't have to go for burnout and, and mental, mental health and depression yeah. Yeah. and suicides and all that. I see that. Yeah. Mm. I mean, listen, I wish you could sit here and talk about this, <laughs> but now we have to end the session <laughs> right here. Mm -hmm. Please come back again. <laughs> <laughs> right, so we can have all these conversations <laughs> very, very insightful. Sure, sure, sure. Um, you know, thank you so much for your time, uh, Joanne and Michelle, as well. Thank you all the very best, uh, in your business. I hope we don't get more people quitting on you <laughs> on Sunday nights. Be like, man, if you don't see me, I am in uh, Mombasa <laughs> in Dubai. <laughs> I am in Dubai, all right. But really, um, it's such an insightful conversation. We've learned a lot, and I know you have, but well, time now for you to take a look at this segment. Well, right about now, how about we meet one of the youngest CEOs that you have ever come across and just get to understand his journey. And first of all, why CEO and not maybe an employee somewhere uh, in a different company? But ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce Manuel. I, I don't want to butch your second name, so <laughs> please help. More. More. Manuel More, <laughs> who's a founder of Trans Studios, uh, here with us. So just take us through, um, you know, his life as a CEO and a Gen Z CEO at, um, at that. So Manuel, it's so good to meet you. Good so first of here. all, let's get to understand Manuel. Who is Manuel? My name is Manuel More. Um, I'm the founder of Trans Studios, and I'm a Gen Z CEO. That's actually my. My identity, yes. <laughs> even on my LinkedIn bio, it's Gen Z CEO. Okay. Because in most meetings when I go, people ask me, are, are you sure you're the CEO? Mm -hmm. <laughs> because they're expecting someone oh, yes. a bit older, someone, yeah. yeah. So I started uh, my company when I was uh, 18 years old. Okay, how old are you now? 26. Wow, okay. I have a lot of experience. Right? I'm heading to 10 years. I did, listen. <laughs> before I'm 30 but yeah, yeah. so mm -hmm. I was very passionate with photography mm -hmm. and animation that's what I studied mm -hmm. in um, Riara University and in Changtao Media Arts College. How are you as a boss to your employees? Currently I have about nine to ten permanent employees mm -hmm. but we also work with uh, with content create because you know we're doing marketing on one end mm -hmm. so we have account managers we have all those but on this other side of production mm -hmm. We have a very big um, list mm -hmm. of employees mm -hmm. who are part-time, mm -hmm. who do photography and videography. Mm -hmm. So, a day in my life, I wake mm -hmm. up very early. I wake up at 3.50, and then I do most of the work that needs to be done, mm -hmm. because that's when I'm most productive. Mm -hmm. In fact, in our team, we work when you're productive. You, if you think midnight is your time, just mm -hmm. deliver by the set deadline. Okay. So after that, around 10 to 12, I have my meetings, mm -hmm. and then I'm free for the rest of the day. So what do you do with your free time? Go to the gym. I know it, it doesn't show yet, <laughs> <laughs> but I go to the gym, yeah. um, I go to the mall shopping, mm -hmm. I meet up with friends, yeah. mostly with my family as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I play golf. Yeah. I try to disconnect from work, okay. to disconnect even from the internet, mm -hmm. because my work is mostly online. Yeah. We transitioned from being a marketing agency, now we are a marketing technology company. Mm -hmm. So we do tech solutions, okay. but it requires a lot of creativity. So you have to disconnect mm -hmm. completely, mm -hmm. be in nature, be yeah. in a space that you, 
yeah. you can come up with but nice isn't ideas. That the most beautiful thing, like the fact that by twelve you're done, you can you have because because there's usually this thing of like work life balance, yeah. and you clearly have both. How is that? Like, how has that then shaped you as an employer to your employees? When I left uh, my employment, I knew even when I have people, I let them be flexible. Okay. So still haven't figured out work, work life balance mm -hmm. because. I was a bit of a workaholic because you know when you're passionate, when the company is new, like you want to continue really working. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But then at some point when now people expect a lot from you, you need to have a fresh mind every yeah. day. So you learn to create a routine mm -hmm. that works for you. Okay. Mm. All right. So then what is it like being a Gen Z boss? Um, do you find instances where people are like, I? Uh uh. No. What are the challenges that you have experienced? What are the perks of being a Gen Z boss? I think it's a mix of everything. On one hand, you're very passionate, you're very energetic, you can do it all. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, you're not very experienced because I'm competing with guys who have been in the industry for more than 20 years. True. I make mistakes that they will never make again. Mm -hmm. But then on the other hand, mm -hmm. I have ideas that they will never come up with because if I come up with an idea immediately, <coughs> I call my team. We are doing this and then we start working on it. So it's, it's challenging and it's also fun. Okay. On the challenging side, um, you'd find sometimes you need to maintain a good relationship with a client, for example. Mm -hmm. And this is something I've improved, so no one should judge me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. When a client tells me to do something, and I know it's, it's not going to work. Like, I know my idea is better. Mm -hmm. So I just tell them, no, I won't do your way. I'll do it this way and you will be happy. Mm -hmm. But some clients don't appreciate that. They don't want you to just do their job. They want you to do it how they want you to do it. Mm -hmm. So growing in my journey, that's when I realized, you know, it's not about you anymore. Yeah. Sometimes you have to think of good ideas. But you also have to know the, the client is, is the one who's paying. Yeah, yeah, and, and they have a clear goal in terms yeah. of what they want. Their approach might be different, but, but they, they have, they yeah, they know what they want day. exactly. So experience is one of our challenges yeah. because that's why now I have to mm -hmm. hire people who are a bit more experienced than me. Okay. So I have to mix my team. What is it like then being a boss to people who are more experienced and you know older than you? I think most of my older employer, uh, employers. Yeah. Employees, employees <laughs> think that I'm crazy. Oh, okay. <laughs> because I can call them like at midnight. I have an awesome idea. <laughs> because my other team, anytime I call them, they're ready. Yeah. But my, some of them mothers, mm. so I'm like, we need to, to send this um, proposal now. <laughs> yeah. And then they're like, like, you midnight, know, don't hey, you? I'm, I'm, I'm with my, my baby is crying. Yeah. I need to. So they think I'm crazy because I don't, we don't have work hours okay. per se, okay. we just work when mm -hmm. we need to deliver something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I'd say they also appreciate that we are very flexible, like from Monday to Friday they might work, Wednesday to Friday and then they are free. Mm -hmm. And then even I had an instance where someone told me, you know, it's my birthday, can I go, mm -hmm. can I go and live on next week? Mm -hmm. But they are already mm -hmm. on leave. Ah, uh, okay. So I'm like, eh, hey, in fact, you should tell us we go, we yeah. turn up. Yeah. And should, oh, so you have no problem. <laughs> like, as long as you yeah. deliver what, what yeah. we need, you yeah. can deliver from whichever location you yeah. are. So I try also like, but to understand how to work with, with yeah. them because yeah. they have more experience mm. and they have a lot that I, want, I need to learn from them. Okay. And then I also try to share what my ideas in a subtle way because mm -hmm. some of them are adamant with the old ways. But I'm always pro change. If this is working, how can we make it better? Do you find yourselves sometimes, you know, between a rock and a hard place? Because then you're like, so do I confront them because they're older? But then again, do I, you know, do you have you found yourself? Yeah, at some point, uh, it was a challenge trying to because I, I also feel very humble. Like I don't feel like I, I, I have that much respect to command them to do something. But then the job requires me to do that. Mm -hmm. So we had to even go in a team building and I told the facilitator, my aim with this team building is 
teach them to respect me and teach me to, to respect mm. them. So, yeah. so the facilitators, like, you know, you're a team, hold this rope, things like that. Yeah. And then when we bond, they understand where I'm coming from and they also see their mm -hmm. point of view. Yeah. So I think we understand each other now. Mm -hmm. And even when we hire new, new people, we already understand how, mm -hmm. how to work with each yeah. other. And how to navigate, navigate that space. How is it then working with your fellow Gen Zs? Because they'll be like, I see you're the same age as me. What mm -hmm. are you telling me? <laughs> no, that's, that's harder. <laughs> yes, really? Yeah. I would expect the older, but okay. Because we relate a little too much. So we waste a lot of time. Do you find yourself sometimes people judging you for being young, um, you know, as a CEO? And how do you respond to that? Mostly people oh, yeah. judge me. Uh, people are surprised, let yeah. me say that. Yeah. That because I'm already small, my, <laughs> I look small yeah. and then I'm also young at the yeah. same time. So when I get emails, when I respond to emails, mm -hmm. people expect, hey, this guy has 20 years experience. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know what, what, what. And then when they meet me, First, you can see them, yeah. you're Manuel. Yeah. I'm like, yes. Yeah. And then now, after they hear what I have to say, then they know oh, it's, it's the same guy who mm -hmm. has those creative yeah. ideas. Yeah. But at some, in some meetings, I have to go with my older employees, mm -hmm. and not, not necessarily older, who look like they're experienced. Mm -hmm. So when they get to the meeting first, mm -hmm. we introduce them, yeah. then there's a rapport, and then when I'm speaking, yeah. It looks like we are still part of a bigger team. So I want you to speak then to the older population, <laughs> right? Who might tend to judge you as, as a young CEO and saying, this one does not have experience, so we, do, we really can't um, you know, do business with you because you're young and all those things. What is this one word, okay, maybe two, that you would say to them? Watch me. Well, that was Manuel More, who is the CEO and founder of Trans Studios. Like he said, watch it. Well, see you on the other side of the show. Well, in a fast-paced world where everything matters from time to productivity and convenience, the Gen Zs are shaping the workforce, the industry, and the most important part is the deliverable. So if you are a Gen Z who's watching us today and thinking, you know what? maybe age to five maybe not now you have the tools that you need to thrive in this either gig economy or the eight to five but listen if you still have any other question let's keep the conversation going on our socials and that is at ntv kenya both on youtube on facebook and on x and visit our website as well and that is at ntv kenya my name is winnie lu remember we have to close it here but see you tomorrow on another interesting episode of your world but until then stay safe